Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about the R3. I've ridden this bike for about four years now. Um, I bought this around 2020 um, during the COVID era. I wanted to discuss my favorite mods, all the work that's been done to this bike, and uh, how I use it on the street and on the track. So we'll start just going uh, for the front to the back, all the mods on this bike. First off, we've got steel braided brake lines. We've got the Galfer centered brake pads, standard brake disc. Um, it's fine for what it is. I run Pirelli Diablo Rosso 2s right now on the front and rear, but I'm getting ready to change those out to the 4s. Um, I've got TST Industries. These are the Halo with the three flashing LEDs in them. These are horrible visibility during the day. Pretty good visibility at night because at night you'll get the uh, you'll get the the light beaming down onto the road so people can see you have a turn signal on, but not so great during the day. We'll turn those on real quick so you can see. I did the standard kind of bluish LED. Um, and then when we hit our flashers, we get three really bright LEDs going. So those are pretty good. I just wanted to get rid of the dinky, floppy, big things out there. I hate the stock ones. So that's brakes. The back brakes, completely stock. Inside of our forks, we have progressive springs. And we have the Ninja 650 shock on the rear. So you might notice that this bike seems like it stands just a little bit taller in the rear. And that's because... Um, the illusion of having this high comfort seat um, and then also the Ninja 650 shock there in the rear you can see. So that um, is done because this bike goes on the racetrack and also because the stock suspension is not amazing. Um, so we'll keep moving back. You'll see on the engine, you probably can't see it from here because the fairings are in the way, but we have the smog block off plate there, um, which is to get rid of the emission stuff. And we also have, just continuing with the engine, all emission stuff, um, replace safety wire and everything for the racetrack into full headers, uh, cat delete, full Akrapovich system with the Norton Motorsports uh, tune on the engine. And that has been super uh, reliable, pain-free. It works flawlessly. You can mail your ECU into them and they'll flash it. Super great modification. And then I've got the zero gravity windshield here. I don't personally love that it's tinted, but that's the way I got the bike and I'm not spending the money to fix it. I've got the stock lever here for brakes. I've got the aftermarket cheapo eBay um, adjustable clutch lever. I don't want to spend the money on the CRGs. They're so expensive. These are like 15 bucks. I've never had a problem with it every year. I take out this pin, grease it, lubricate my cable. No problems. I've got the Vortex clip-ons here. These do make riding it definitely less comfortable when you're on long trips. And then the stock ones, the stock ones have the little rise here. You do have drills already cut in, or drills, drill holes already done uh, to help lock these into place on this, um, if you get the right vortex. Um, and then aftermarket seat, like I said, I've got these just cheapo side grips, much cheaper than um, the, you know, the more expensive name brand ones, but um, they work okay for what they what they need to do and then um, I've got the Norton Motorsports relocation brackets here that move back the pegs a little bit and a little bit higher deleted rear um, passenger pegs I've got generic eBay swing arm spools which are super nice for lubricating the chain and cleaning this bike up and then I've got eBay uh, turn signals and then a Yoshimura rear plate um, I would probably go with a generic one in hindsight if I were to redo it. I bought this bike for $1,800. It was somebody's old track bike. They left it in the street form. Um, and so it still had headlights, turn signals on it. 
um, but it had been laid down in the back of a truck and possibly on the racetrack and so I just sanded down these fairings repainted them that's why they don't have any of the vinyl on them but for eighteen hundred dollars it came with the full exhaust system everything on it I think buying old track bikes is one of the greatest um, kind of hacks to get a good a good deal on something and then of course in the back we've got Norton Fab uh, hanger and um, our rear tire another uh, Pirelli Diablo Rossa 2 so those are the mods I've done to this R3 my favorites by far would be the exhaust the tune the tune is so nice for smoothing out the throttle um, as far as changing the ergonomics, I probably wouldn't do it in hindsight. Good thing I've got the components so I can change it back still whenever I want. I love the suspension, um, especially having much harder front forks with those progressive springs. Really, really helpful. Um, and then this bag, obviously. Nice to have some storage. So anyway, let's take this for a ride and we'll talk more about it. I bought this bike as somebody's used track bike. Um, he had done the Akrapovich exhaust. I think now they cost like $1,200. Would I do that? I would not pay $1,200 for a full Akrapovich exhaust on a 360 bike. But I sure do love it. I have a ton of fun with it. Um, I don't know if you all can hear it, how well it's coming through the microphone. But um, it's pretty fun. I run it with the baffle in it because supposedly Norton says you get marginally better horsepower and it's better to have some back pressure on this engine. So I run it like that. Um, I, I've actually never taken it out, but I know it'll make it a little bit louder if you need more noise. So one of my favorite things, like I said earlier, was the dash about this bike it's simple it's everything i want nothing that i don't right fuel temperature i mean i don't need any more um detail than that really than just those bars and then gear indicator it tells you the gear you're in even when you have the clutch in which is nice and then you got a couple indicators turn signal high beam neutral i mean pretty standard and then this um indicator light the shift indicator light is actually adjustable so if you turn the bike off um, there's a way it shows you in the manual how you can change when that flashes and when it goes solid and stuff like that so I love that feature about this bike um, I have a set pretty low but you can change it based on whatever you want um, I just think it's kind of nice that it's adjustable. So the Norton Motorsports Flash, I like probably the most because of the throttle cut, right? So when, when you roll off the throttle, the jerkiness, like the lurch forward, absolutely drives me crazy on my FZ07, which doesn't have a flash or anything. And this bike, it's infinitely more smooth. And so that's why I might end up flashing my 07. But I uh, highly recommend the flash for this bike if the throttle cut is annoying to you also. And then you've got miles per gallon here. I'm not sure if it's still accurate with the flash. I'm not sure if it's just, you know, taking your speed, RPM, and like throttle position and calculating it. So I've never really tracked it. Um, I think you get such good MPG on this bike that it really doesn't matter. I'm not sure it really would affect it too bad. Ooh, nice BMW. I'm on my way to cars and coffee. But anyway, the quick review of this bike is, I love this bike. I paid $1,800 for it with like 6,000 miles on it yeah, because it was someone's old track bike. 
But he still had it in completely street, le street legal configuration. Um, it had some damage on both sides of it because it had been dropped. But the frame was fine. It was just scuffed up on the sides a little bit. And so I just repainted it. So you probably noticed I didn't have any of the vinyl decals on it. But this bike has been nothing but good to me. Like average MPG 60. It doesn't take premium fuel too. So it's dirt cheap to run. Odometer 10,281. So um, it runs reliably even with, you know, tunes and things like that. I take it to the track and I still have a ton of fun. And I've done several track days. It's not like I'm going through a set of tires every track day, right? So, um, absolutely love this bike. Anyone who says that 300 can't do highway speeds probably has a very old or crappy 300. So, ooh, RK. Anyway, that's the quick review. Is if you're thinking about buying an R3. They're great bikes. I love them. So, anyway, if you do a Ninja 400 or an R3, you can't go wrong. They're both pretty great bikes. So, um, I will say, a lot of the people on Ninja 400s are definitely a little bit faster at the racetrack, just a hair when you're flat out along a back straight or something like that it makes it pretty hard to pass anyone actually um, when you're in like an open novice class um, pretty difficult to pass anyone on this bike except if they're just like very scared and slow so anyway um, those are my favorite mods done to this bike if I had to do them all over again I'd probably do the flash I'd probably do a cutoff um, exhaust and not a full one um, and then I would probably skip the rear set relocators and the clip-ons. It just makes it very uncomfortable to ride. But all the LED upgrades, everything like that, the windshield I like. Um, so yeah, with that, that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed.